So how do we actually search in sport? So I'm going to show this video. It's taken a couple of years ago. Uh, but if you're a Lakers fan, you, 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 you might find this interesting. So we have this play. Let's just say I'm a coach, or I'm in media, or I'm someone at home. And I say, well, I want to find all the plays like that. How many times has that happened? The fundamental question here is, how do I actually query that? Well, what I could do, I could go to YouTube, and I could say it's a three-point shot. So in this season, there was over 40,000 three-point shots. So I'm going to retrieve, I'm going to get a list of 40,000 shots there. Now I have the tracking data. And the tracking data allows us to be a bit more specific with our language. So for those who are familiar with basketball, you could say it's a pick and pop. Or it's a behind the back pass by Steve Nash, and it occurred at the top of the three-point line. However, if I wanted to know where all the players were, their speed, velocity, acceleration, and the events, how many words would I need to describe that? Well, the answer is a lot. And it begs the question, when we're actually searching in sport, what is the language? What is the query language that we should use? For the longest period of time, we've been using words. Words just don't cut it. OK, so we have tracking data. What is the purpose of tracking data? Red is the ball, green is attacking, yellow is defending. That is representing what we see in the pixels. So that is a perfect representation, low dimensional representation of what we see in the pixels. Not only is it low dimensional, it's interpretable and interactive. So if I have that play, imagine if I could ask the question, find me all the plays like that. I can't describe it via words, but I have that example. I have that visual query. Find me all the plays like that. Well, we can do that now. And so it's a paradigm shift on how we query. Instead of using words, we want to use the visual modality. 40 to 50% of our brain is associated with the visual cortex. Let's get that to work. And so this is a concept of chalkboarding. Uh, so this is in a couple of our products uh, at Stats Perform. But I'll give you the intuition here. So I think of this as YouTube for sport. So we have the tracking data, which is representing what we see in the pixels. And so we just have a video player here. And let's just say I, I play a game. And what you're going to see is the tracking data. So I just pick a game of interest. I say, and I can just get it streaming. Again, red is the ball. Yellow is going left to right. And green is going right to left. And so I can, I can get the human to select how long the play is. So just say it's a three-second play. And I could scrub through to find what is interesting. Or it could be streaming live. And so imagine if I get to a point in the game, I go, well, stop. Find me all the plays like that. I click a button, and in less than a second, I can give you a ranked list of all the plays like that. But this is inherently interactive. This is interpretable. So imagine if I could say, well, I'm only interested in a couple of those plays in the ball. Find me all the plays like that. And then I have a refined list there. Or I have an iPad, or I have, a, I have, a, I have some type of interactive device. Why can't I draw a player and query that? That's what we can do now. OK? What I get really excited, I think that's cool, but what I get really excited about is the idea of what if. So imagine if I had this play, I could say, well, stop. Tell me everything about that. What's the likelihood of this player scoring that position? What happens if I move that player around? What happens if I move that defender around? How does that change the percentage? Or what happens if I switch that player with another player? How does that change? So it's the interface to enable us to ask the questions that we really want. And now machine learning, interactive interface, we can start to do this.